guys, welcome back to Magic TV. It's nine o'clock on a Tuesday and it is time for a Talk Magic. And I am here with a very good friend and an amazing guy, someone who's been in Magic a very long time, a living legend, Mr. Mark Mason, the best pitch man in Magic. How you doing, Mark? <laughs> Hello, Craig. Good morning. How are you? Uh, I'm great. All the better for seeing you, mate. It's been, it's been a few months. We're filming this in December and... Uh, I haven't seen you since Blackpool in uh, in February, have I? It's been it's been no about eight months now. When we yeah, uh, I haven't seen you uh, since Blackpool. As you know, this year has been a bit odd and weird. There's not really been much travelling and no conventions, and so I've virtually seen seen no one. But no, I, I definitely saw you in Blackpool. I remember. Well, and, you know, um, it's always good to see you. Oh, mate! The reason I wanted you on the channel right near the beginning is because because of who you are I mean you know almost everybody in magic you know I, I know a lot of people but whoever I speak to if I say to me Mark Mason it's like oh he's such a great guy he's such an amazing guy you're so well connected you've been in magic such a long time yeah. and and you've done it all you you you, you obviously have uh, JB magic which I want to talk about uh you've yeah. been a dealer a long time you've been a performer a long time and you've got so much insight that I think you can share with people so I'm really glad that you you, you found time yeah, to yeah I mean to answer that short and sweet yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm the old guy now remember when we were the young guys Craig <laughs> now it's Ryland right Ryland's the young guy now he uh, isn't so I'm the old guy now but yeah I mean I slept around the world a lot I guess you know and if you if you travel around enough you tend to meet a lot of people one way or another and you, not everybody loves you, you know, and there's no point in saying they do, but you do your best to give a good service and do a good job and whatever, and hopefully um, it comes back positive in the end. Well, let's start at the very beginning. When did you get into magic, Mark? Was it the typical story of you had a magic set when you were three years old? And... No, no, I didn't see any, no magic at all until I was about oh, 21, 20, 21, 22, that sort of age. Um, I just saw a guy in Blackpool doing some tricks and thought, I wouldn't mind being able to do a few tricks. You know, I thought it'd be kind of a cool thing to be able to do. Um, try to think when that would be. That would be 85, 86. So it's a while ago, right? Well, a long time ago. And, yeah. um, back then I was working on a, on a, like a, almost like a fairground, you know, on the side stalls. I was like pitching. It's the same, really. It's, it's, it, it always goes back to that. But um, I, I met a guy called Gordon Court, who was a kids entertainer from Bournemouth. He, he's dead now, but he was called Cortez, if anybody remembers him. And started to go to his house and he lent me a few books and a few things. And all of a sudden it, it, it grew into, into a, it's a crazy hobby really, isn't it? I didn't think it was gonna be a living. Let, let's not make out for one minute. I thought it was gonna be my job. I never yeah. thought it'd be a job. I just thought it'd be cool to know a few tricks and I might get a girlfriend or something, you know. <laughs> or something cool might happen to me if I know a few tricks. That was kind of what I was thinking at the time. That's awesome. Yeah. But then, so it started off as a hobby. Did, before you, because obviously a lot of people these days know you as a dealer. And I want to talk about that in a bit, but people sometimes forget that you're such an accomplished performer as well. And you've literally performed all over the world. Did you go full time before becoming a dealer? How did that all? How did that time frame come uh, about? Not, no, no, I wasn't uh, performing magic before I became. I had a little, a little shop. So, in uh, you know, Trisha, my wife. Yes. So Trisha had a bed and breakfast, a hotel in Blackpool, and uh, she had sixteen bedrooms, and that's where we lived. And she had a little bar, and I used to do these little tricks in the bar. And before you know it, it's three times a week, and and you're starting, certainly you haven't got chops or skills, but you're starting to understand a bit more, you know what I mean, there's somebody here, you don't want them there, I'll move them or, or whatever it may be. Meanwhile, I used to go up to a magic shop all the time called the House of Secrets. Can you remember Bill Thompson? Yes, I can, yes. We're going way back I'm, now, but yeah. Yeah, I'm in there one day and this guy walks in and he says to me, um, think of a card, think of a card. And so I'm thinking of this card and he names the card and I, I think Jesus has come back. You know, how can you name a card? I'm thinking of, right, Craig? I, I'm doing nickels to dimes, dynamic coin and a, and a thumb tip, you know. And he's telling me what I'm thinking. I left that, 
that that day and I said to Trisha, I've just seen a guy who just told me what card I'm thinking of. The next time I met that guy, I had a little magic shot. Well, that's not true. I'll tell you the name first, because a lot of people get mixed up. We were the joke box. The joke box. We just sold jokes. Your typical Blackpool stuff, curly wigs and clown shoes and coffin medicine and, and curly dog turd and whatever it was. All the, the Smithy stuff. Yeah, co correct. Then I, I started to demonstrate long and short cards and the dynamic coin trick in one corner. And after a while, we'll get there eventually, we changed to um, J joke box magic because we had some magic. Then when we kicked all the jokes out, we changed it into JB magic. I was going to change it to Mark Mason's magic shop, but I decided JB had been good and and you know it sounded good. Of course, the newcomers now, when they come to the booth and say, what does that mean? I tell them it's James Bond magic. And they go, <laughs> oh, hi, James Bond. But, but that is where it came from. So in comes this guy, and I get to know this guy, and this guy turns out to be Joe Riding. Can you remember him? Oh, yes, Joe Riding. He's the probably one who the didn't best, think of a card on me. And we became fairly good friends. Thing. We became fairly good friends. I'm going to say 88 I opened. About 1990, it's that long. I've been doing magic four, or five, six years just for fun. He says to me, will you cover my show tonight in the Hilton Hotel in Blackpool? The same Hilton that's been there, it's changed now recently, but it's been the Hilton forever. And I say, no. And he goes, no, seriously. Well, and I said, Abs, I can't go and do like a magic show and stuff. I just do it in the bar and messing around. And he talks me into doing it for whatever it was, 100 quid, or I can't even remember the money, really. Whatever it was, it would have been that, because he would have kept some, right? <laughs> but um, I, I go and I do this show, and it's just in the lounge, and there's like 30, 40 people in there. And I come back and report in, and he said, how did you do? And I said, I think it went okay. Now, it probably didn't go that great, Craig. It went okay. You know, you learn a lot, right? Mm. And... I think about a month later, he must have got a string of Friday somewhere, you know, for more money. And he slotted me in to cover loads of them. And all of a sudden, I was doing magic for, for money. And I did lots of lots of jobs with Joe. When I say a lot, we, hundreds together. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm, I'm performing magic in the early 90s. Usual venues, cricket clubs, weddings... Corporate with Joe. I, I knew no corporate people. I had no corporate clients. Or I was just a guy who, who liked doing magic. And that's really how I stumbled in there. Well, you know what? I remember the first time I saw Joe riding. It was on a Vic Pinto tricker tape. I remember um, that. Yeah. And I saw, I saw Joe riding for the first time. And I was absolutely blown away. I was like, oh, my God, this guy's amazing. It, it's a funny story, Joe, because... I meet a lot of magicians who don't really rate him that much. They were like, yeah, he was okay. And, what? and I said, did you ever perform with him? Did you ever go to tables with him? I said, he, don't laugh because he did I'll start again. And, and, and his counting trick was amazing. He used to say, I'll show you this trick with 10 cards and then there'd be 11, then there'd be nine, then there'd be 13. And then all gamblers cop every time. Mm -hmm. and, I, and they'd be in hysterics. And I go... And he said to me, Mark, you need three, four, five good tricks and, and it's, it's about you. And if they love you, you you'll be absolutely fine. And, and I kind of stuck with that golden rule right till today, really, that I, I, I've never performed alongside you, but I'm sure you've got a staple of three, four, five items that are always in. And then you might add something every now and then. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and he used to slay them. And I used to go, why is he so good at this? And he said, I just do the same four items. I think he did our start again better than anyone in the world. Do you remember yeah. the Terry Rogers cricket bat and you wipe the chalk line off? Yeah. I think he did it better than anyone on the planet. Yeah, I'd agree. It's a cricket bat with three chalk lines on it. But it's not about the trick, is it? It's about you. No. And then all of a sudden I, I was involved and I got a couple of agents in Blackpool and now they're sending me to the Claremont and to here and I remember once going to Bolton or Wigan or something, thinking I was going a long way, you know. Can you go to Bolton? And I went, Bolton? I went, that's like 45 minutes away. And all of a sudden, yeah, 
you're involved. Then way down the line, I should really give a little tip of the hat to Crystal Dale and Phil J, because a long way down the line, they kind of invited me down to London and I got in that little circle. And all of a sudden, they had better gigs than me. There's no doubt about it. They had like what I thought was like rock star gigs, you know, with real clients and celebrities and, and stuff. And, and it's been, like you said, it's been, I don't know, 92, it's been 28 years of, of doing, I don't do that many gigs now, you know, with Craig. I was about to say, is it is the focus more on the on the online yeah. shop now than? Yeah, when we when we went to live in America in 2010, I was still performing. I I actually had in my head that I was going to perform everywhere in America and get an agent and do this. And I did do some shows. I'm not going to tell you I didn't. Of course I did. And then I started to say to Trish, it's quite hard work, America. You're, you're always on an aeroplane. It's not like you're in Birmingham and you nip down to Northampton and up to. Every gig's on an aeroplane. And I went, yeah. this is actually pretty grueling. And I said, I'm going to try and concentrate more on just manufacturing and selling at conventions, selling online. And, and again, when I say online, I don't want to be Penguin and I don't want to be Vanishing Inc. And I don't want to be, even my good friends, the Nardis, Alakazam. And I, I'm happy... Today, I, won't, I don't even lie to you. I can show you. I think I've got eight orders today. I'm over the moon with my eight orders. That's fine. And my goal is to get 10 orders every day. Well, you, you, and we'll talk about this in a bit, but you make a lot of your money, I imagine, from conventions <laughs> because, yeah, damn, yeah, and yeah. we'll talk about this, but damn, you cannot walk past the Mark Basin booth without spending money. You just can't. It's impossible. Yeah, and, and I figured that, it's a, it's a great way to, I like making a living behind booths. I like the job. It's, hey, let's not glam it. It's a long day on your feet and you're tired at the end. And, and some guy says, what does the pen trick do? And just as you finish, another guy says, what does the pen trick do? And then three more people go, what does it? And you go, geez, this is, a, but it's what you signed up for, right? You signed up to, to show people the new pen trick. So but I, I like doing that, Craig. It's never been a big chore for me, that, really. Um, well, you know, I've spent some time on stands, as you know, Deming, and it's a very difficult thing. And I know from speaking to other dealers, you are not happy if you have a stand anywhere near you because <laughs> everyone is just going to gravitate to... I don't know how you do it. Maybe you can explain but like literally it's like magnetism. You instantly get drawn in and you end up spending money on stuff. Just, yeah, I, I, I'll buy it, I'll buy it, I'll buy it. It's almost like you're hypnotizing people. Well, I it, don't think I could hypnotize yeah. people. It's funny you said what you said though, you know, because I better not do names, it might not be fair, but there's a group of dealers who love being near me, they ask, all right? Because they figure that if there's 50 people around there, I'm going to, I'm going to get an overspill. I'll tell you how I describe it to people. Have you noticed in the last 15 years, all car dealers are together now? Yeah? Yes, yes. There's a reason Ford want to be near Toyota or near Lexus. Or back in the day, that didn't make sense to me. I'd go, why is a Ford guy open near? But he figures if you're looking for a Ford, you might, while you're there, have a look at the Lexus next door. So there's a group of dealers who love being near me. There's another group of dealers. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Who there's one dealer who won't attend a convention. Wow. I, I can't tell you who, because it wouldn't be fair. But he literally doesn't go. If the only booth is near me, he goes, I'm not coming. So I guess that's a compliment in a way. And I don't mean it to sound any other way than the truth, because it is the truth. But yeah, I mean... I, I dem hard. I'm not going to lie to you. I dem hard. I'm I'm a little bit loud, and I make sure you know I'm in the room. Um, my job is to sell sell magic tricks. But you're such a nice guy, you know. I, I think that's one of the things. You know, I I I just know. You go. To, let's take Blackpool for example. The Blackpool convention. There are some stands that I go to, and they just sit there behind their booth with their arms folded. And they don't look at you and you pick stuff up and you go, oh, what's this? Oh, uh, they, they dismiss you. Well, you're so inviting. You're so warm. It's sure. almost like, you know, I've stood there and I know a lot of people in magic. 
And I've stood there on your stand, handing you money, which is what I normally do on your stand. <laughs> um, That's the right answer, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> and people will walk by and, and you'll be saying, hi, John, hi, Barry, hi, blah, 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 hi, blah. And it's like, how does bloody Mark Mason know every single, all 4,000 people you well, seem to be on a first name basis? 4, my, my absolute <laughs> nailed on best one I do is I tell you what you bought. People. <laughs> People come to the booth and they go, I don't know if you remember me. And I go, yeah, you bought Solo two years ago. And they go, that's ridiculous. That's not even real. I don't know how I can do that. But sometimes I can just remember what people buy. I make a little image. I, I think we're talking about sales now, right? Mm -hmm. Sales and sales techniques. Yes. If, if you can't put a face to a name and if you can't remember clients and if you're going to sit like this all day, I'll give you a great example. The first IBM SAM combined, the first one, the I remember big Kentucky. thing in Kentucky. Louisville. I, I can't remember there. the year. The lady opposite me watched movies all day long. All day. She'd go, that was a great movie. Oh, and Tom Hanks, he's good, isn't he? And I'm like, what are you doing? And, and then at the end, she'd go, you're so busy. You have a big crowd around her. You're not really in sales, are you? You're not in sales. It's a bit of a hobby, really, isn't it, that? You're just hoping somebody's going to buy a hank of rope. Is that right? You're not in sales, are you? If you sit watching Tom Hank movies. No, you're not. <laughs> and and she, knitted, she knitted a scarf the same week. She knitted a scarf. And, and, and I've had the fourth best convention still today in my history. The fourth best I've ever done, ever. It's knocking it out of the park. And she said, oh, I love that Tom Hanks. He's great. Him, he makes me laugh. And I'm like, this is... So to say hello, Bob, hello, Ian, hello, Steve, hello, it, to me is a part of sales. Now, also, remember, you said it at the beginning, I've been around a long time. I know it's Craig Petty. I know it's Ian Baradell. I know it's uh, Bernie Pedley. I know it's Steve Macro. That's my job, right? That's not yeah. hard. That's my, my job. But also, let's not lie, they've been supporting my business for 30 years, haven't they? I, I feel, out of respect, I should at least know your name. That's great. Brilliant advice. But it's true. But, but you're one of the few dealers that actually does that. Well, yeah. And do, do you the know other, what the, the Magic other, Road Shows yeah. are? Do you know what the Magic Road Shows are, where we travel from town to town, five of us, and yeah. we do a, a show? Yeah. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm just going to tell you something that I, is always interesting to me. My job is to um, introduce the other four guys. I always introduce them. Ladies and gentlemen, he's Dirk Oksander, you know that. And Paul Richards, do you know Paul, my friend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always introduces me, because someone has to introduce me, right? And Paul always does it. And he never, ever once said, what do you want me to say or whatever. It's interesting that Paul always says, everyone thinks Mark Mason's a great demonstrator. Everybody loves him. But what they don't realise is, like you said, he's a good magician. He's a solid, seasoned, professional magician. And I really think that helps when you're deming, Craig. And that's nice of Paul to say that. And I often analyse it and think, if... If you don't do a good double lift and you don't do a good top change and you can't get the car to third down and, and your flipper coin technique's horrible, you can't get people to buy into that little moment, that little dream, right? Yeah. And How you know what? That's so true. Like, you have some serious chops. Let's just not underplay that. Like, if anybody's seen your DVD set, Decade, you know, it, it's Decade, right? Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I have real world magic, and then I did decade ten years later, didn't I? You are the first person that I saw that did a flawless free turn pass by Bruce Savant. Yeah, and it was watching you do that that made me want to learn it because I was like, my God, this is amazing. That is not an easy move. I remember no, it's not when an I came into your shop. I used to come into the shop all of the time, as you know, and I remember you turning around to me and saying, "No, you don't want to buy that." Get Miracle Material by Michael Kaminska. Ah, oh, it's a great book. My favourite book, and you were the guy that recommended it. And, yeah, and great you're so book. knowledgeable about all of this stuff, and you can do so many bloody hard slides. But I think because people see you deming very yeah. 
Nike stuff. And, and that's and, kind of Paul's introduction of me at the road shows ago that everybody just thinks this guy wants to sell you a solo, but he can do magic, I promise you. If you need a pass, if you need a second deal, if you need a peak steal, and, and those DVDs have got the put and take move and the classic force and one of my favourite. Can you remember blind, Blindside? Where you throw it yep. in and steal it out? I, yep. Do I remember you like Card Under Box? Is that you? Yeah. Yep. So I do a I do a card under box as well. That one day I will publicly let let out of the bag. I'll I'll, I'll show my cap, and and that move is in there every time. It's an offbeat. I throw it in, give them the deck, and it's back under the box. And it's it's a little bit choppy. It's a bit technically not the world's easiest thing to do. But but um, if if you've got the right angle and the right audience, it, it's like unbelievable. It's so good. Uh, I don't know if we're here to talk about tricks. I, I, you didn't yeah, even tell no, me what we are. to talk about. We're just but... talking about you, and absolutely a big part of what you do is 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 magic. Well, here's the thing: you have got so many serious drops. When you're going out and doing a gig, if you had to give one piece of advice to somebody to win a table over or win a group of people over, because close-up magic is hard. People forget that you've got to go up to a group of people who have no idea who you are. And within a couple of seconds, you've got to make them friends with you and you've got to get them to want to actually speak to you. And you do that brilliantly. I mean, what- Yeah, and, you know? and again, there's many techniques for this, isn't there? there? There's some people just walk up and start. Some people don't, I, I see guys who barely introduce themselves to just start doing something. I like to say, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your magician. I never say I'm the magician. I'm your magician. It's like, oh, he's here. You know, it's important. He's, and I like to say that because, and I also don't like to start until I've got everybody's attention. I, that, you know, that can't always be nailed on. There's sometimes a guy who just is not listening. But I like to always say I'm your magician. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mark Mason. I'm your magician. Even though I'm going to every table in the room, they, they go, oh, this guy, he's, he's here for us, you know, rather than just some guy doing a few a few tricks. But magic-wise, I, I only do what you think. I only, if it's tables, you know, I do card under glass, card in mouth. Um, invisible deck is my closer still to this day. I don't know a better trick than invisible deck. I have a brilliant routine with loads of one-liners and gags and bits of business. <clears throat> but it really, it's an interesting question that you could almost talk about that for the hour, couldn't you? You know, the, the delivery. Mm -hmm. I think people struggle more with pre-dinner than tables. Yeah. When you go up to a table, they're sitting almost waiting for something. Their food isn't here yet. The appetizers are not here yet. The staff, but when they're all meet, you know, I haven't seen you for three months. We shake hands and how did the sales go? Did you like Sweden? The last thing they want is some guy doing tricks. I think pre yeah. pre walk around dinner is a harder job than sitting down. Do, do you? Yeah, I'd, I'd actually agree with you because they're trying to network and catch up, like you say, with the people I haven't seen for a while. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So there's a lot of and networking to go going on. Them, and you've got to walk over to them, and in a couple of seconds, I um, you've got to you've got to grab their attention. I like Simon Lovell's approach, where he kind of went up and he said, "Hi, uh, I'm the magician." What did he say now? He goes. Um, uh, 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 you've won a competition or something. You've won a competition. You've won uh, one free card trick before dinner. Could have, that, that second place, it could have been worse. First place is five free card tricks before yeah, dinner. Two, right? yeah. And yeah, what was nice about that. Could, and that's a great opener, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And there's tons of them out there. Tons of... You, you can't beat doing it, though. You've got to go up and do it, right? It... it, it it changes your perspective. It's not like the house. It's not like your girlfriend. It's not like your wife. When you walk up to six people in a restaurant having dinner, you know, you, that changes how you see it all, really, your perspective of, of how much material you need, number one. You don't need that much material. You don't need 39 tricks, do you? No, you don't. You know, no. but uh, uh, I... I, I I'm a firm believer in they've got a bit of hear you. I don't mean you should be screaming in a restaurant, but they've got a bit of hear you. It's dreadful when you can't hear the guy, right? Yeah. It's horrible. Or girl. It's uh, yeah, horrible well, when I've you go. Talked about it on the channel. Doing? My pet, my pet hate is when you're doing those big banquet tables with ten people, 
and the magician goes over and it's like goes and just does it to two people and there's eight yeah. people on the table that just are aren't even paying attention and they're doing it as like a well yeah. you know it should be hey guys how you doing you know like exactly a and different. my advice when people ask me that is sure do something for these two but make eye contact with everyone and you should be moving within a minute you should be moving within a minute if you shouldn't be doing four minutes for these two you should be moving within a minute and the other pet hate of mine was when they've spent 600 quid on the center bit you know and it's it's the size of a christmas tree uh, don't you just love that right and you uh, but there in a minute buddy you know that that's tough as well isn't it yeah, that's it really that's is. always hard but I have to agree, you've got to get their attention. You've got to say, hey, good evening, Natalia. I'm your magician. Welcome to tonight's banquet awards or whatever it is you, you, you need to say, you know, just to, to get you in there, really. Well, here's, here's a question for you. Um, when did you, going back a little bit, because you talked about how uh, you, you had the shop and you moved it to specifically just magic. That's kind of when I first met you, because I remember... Uh, Blackpool for me, and I talked about this off camera beforehand, Blackpool for me was the Monday as well, because it was kind of like you went to Blackpool for the weekend. This I'm talking way back when the dealers were around the horseshoe, right? And yeah. um, and then after, on the on, you stayed over on the Sunday night, and then on the Monday you queued up down that street to get into to get into JB Magic. Yeah. But you're talking about Nelson Road, the little shop, right? Because before yes. we moved down to Lytham Road, the bigger shop. So we moved to Lytham Road in 2010. So you're talking somewhere in that 88... Sorry, 2000, yeah. what am I saying? You're talking somewhere in the 88 to 2000. Yes. And then in 2000, we moved to the other shop. Uh, yeah. it, was, it was funny because I, I didn't have a dealer's booth then. There was just a horseshoe... And it was crazy, the shop. We used to get um, what we called the overseas guys, the, the, the Wednesday and Thursday, so from Austria and, I don't know, Sweden. And the first time I met Leonard Green was in the shop. He was performing. And, and, and then we used to get... Friday was always good as well. Saturday and Sunday for us was always quiet. In fact, Sunday, I used to come up to the convention. I used to buy a one-day ticket and have a walk around and buy some stuff. And But Monday was bonkers, wasn't it? It was... Absolutely. I tell people who have never saw it, and I'm sure they go, he's making some of this up. When we went to the big shop, a lot of people will remember, but some won't. We had a little taxi rank. We had a proper taxi rank outside. I never asked for that. They just figured out that 300 people were coming to this little magic shop thing. So they were, the Blackpool taxi drivers would, would be, and I, I always used to be sad when it rained because I just couldn't get everyone in. And they'd stand there in the rain and go, they're all mad. It's, it's a car trick, right? <laughs> but, but, uh... And I think one of the reasons, though, and this is what I want to talk about, one of the reasons and the thing that's kind of personified JB Magic for me is if you want to get one of Mark Mason's tricks or releases, the only place to get it from is JB Magic. They yeah. can walk around the whole of Blackpool and look at everything, but they won't see the new thing. And you're very good at creating a buzz around this new product that's coming out. And you've, you've created throughout the years so many things. Yeah, and the I, only place that you can get I, I, I agree with you. Um, back then, you really probably couldn't get any. And now I, I sell to other dealers and I have a distributors and there's Murphy's and all the usual stuff. But back then... I mean, way back we used to send out. A, did you? Was you on my mail list where you got the the hot list and 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 that was how we sold magic, right, Craig? I mean, I didn't know any other way to sell magic. I didn't direct call people, and I always remember when we got um, the internet in 90, 1991, We got the internet, and an email had come, and we'd gather around and we're all excited. That didn't really exist then. Now I'm not the greatest online presence by a long chalk. But yeah, I tried to get a little bit of a buzz going and, and something happening and, and, and try to always deliver one or two, sometimes three, if it's been a good year, new things for Blackpool. That's my usual launch. And so if guys would come in on the Monday knowing there's going to be a new trick in there, whatever that trick might have been that year. 
What made you decide to go down the route of creating your own stuff? And how do you go through that process? Because I know these days you work with a lot of people who will come to you and say, yeah. hey, I've got this idea. But back then, I know you did that a bit, but a lot of the stuff that you're putting out was your own creation and you've created so much magic. Yeah. I remember- so in the early 90s, Craig, in the early 90s, I got invited really to my first proper convention. I'd been to one or two small ones, but in Columbus, Ohio, the Magi Fest, I'm going way back now, before Josh and Andy and stuff, I'm going when Magi Fest was owned by a group of businessmen, basically owned it. And I got invited there by Jim King from Mac Magic because I was buying some things for the shop. When I got there, he invited me to his warehouse and there was a table full of stuff. And I thought, I wonder what all this stuff's for. And he said, Mark, just you know, tell me anything you want to sell at the convention and I'll deliver it all on your booth tomorrow. And we're going back when, before Raven, I don't know what year that was, before Pen Through Anything, I'm going back now. And I said to him, oh, I said, I think you don't understand. I've got my own eight tricks and I brought them with me. And he went, you've got eight tricks? And I went, yeah, one's a little prediction trick and one's a money spinning thing and one's, and he went, oh, okay, no problem. So the next day I'm at the convention, no one knows, who, I've never been to America, no one knows who I am. There's not one person knows who I am. You can't get in this room. You can't get in the room for people trying to buy stuff. And in comes this guy and he says, so do you make these? And I went, yeah, I make just a few little tricks. You know, I've got this one and this one's a prediction and you stop and this matches. And, and he said to me, I'll have a thousand of them, 800 of them, a thousand of them, really, a thousand of them, a thousand. And I went, holy, I thought he was a bit of a crackpot. I thought he's a bit of a screwball, right? And all of a sudden I said to Trish, maybe this is a brilliant avenue. It's just like finding another avenue, right? Like I know you found many over your years. And I went, maybe we should be concentrating more on making these tricks and selling them. And then one or two people came along. I mean, Tony Stevens, no newspaper in 92. That was a game changer, really, you know. You know, the thing that, uh, uh, yes, but also the other thing that created such a buzz, and I'm sure it was you that put it out, Switcheroo. Oh, uh, we could do an hour on Switcheroo. The guy we bought that off was called Russell Needs Wicket. And of all things you just, I know you didn't know this, he sold me it at the Magi Fest in Columbus. That's, you should do mentalism. <laughs> he drags me into this room and says, I've got this utility device and he does it and he does it and he does it. And I went, holy camole, I went, that's great. And I won't do the whole story, but he wanted more money than, I went, well, this is magic. I went, you can't, it's not gonna happen. So in the end, I went partners with Jim King from Mac Magic and it was massive, massive. It, it was ridiculous. I don't know one guy wow. in the UK that wasn't doing the switcheroo. Like, everyone did it. It was just the thing that you had. Uh, why it was a game changer was like the paper. So what we call the big stars of magic, my phone would ring and it would be a real rock star magician. Go, can I get um, a switcheroo? And I'd go, I think that was John Cornelius Trish. I think that was John Cornelius ordering a switcheroo and stuff. And I'd go, it's like not even true is it you know it's like a dream sort of thing and everyone wanted one everyone wanted one and I'll, I'll tell you something hardly anybody knows we didn't have enough I, I never there's no reason for me to lie or make stuff up. we didn't have enough money to to get injection molded okay mm -hmm. so do you know you can injection mold something or you can make something called extrusion do you know what extruding is it's like no. making a sausage do right. you know when they make a sausage so they roll plastic out and that's how it forms rather because extrusion is a lot cheaper than, than injection molding. They wanted 19,000 pounds for the mold. And I said to Trish, we, we can't afford to do that. We'd have to get a bank loan basically. So I went to this one company and they said, we can make it for you. In fact, how big does it have to be? And I told them, they said, we make hurdles that you jump over running hurdles, the top plastic bit, that's the same size. And I went, and they went, 
yeah, we, we'll just chop them up into pieces for you. And I said to Trish, there's a guy here makes running hurdles and he's just going to chop them up into pieces. So it was like everything fell into place and all of a sudden, I used to, I didn't have a fax then and Jim King bought me a fax. He had it delivered to the shop and bought me a fax. And he used to send messages going, uh, I'm trying to think of some back then. Do you remember Hank Lee? Yeah. Hank Lee yeah. had two or 3,000 himself. This is how big it was. Uh, he went, Hank Lee just bought 900. Hank Lee just bought 700. And I'm going like, holy crap. There was a guy in Germany called Tasma Salbatica, I think. or He bought 500 for FISM, just to take to FISM. Uh, and he kept sending me these faxes. And I'm going, I was having thousands of them. Uh, so, yeah, you're right. It was, it was mental, wasn't it? But it turned out to be a running hurdle from Crystal Palace track and field. <laughs> would you ever consider bringing it back out? Because I bet you that people, it would sell just as well these days because there's nothing else like well, it. I don't have to make names up. In the last three months, Guy Hollingworth asked me for one. And Chris Payne, do you know Chris Payne? Yes, I do. Just sent me a brilliant routine. He asked my permission to make one. Okay. I said, of course you can make one. Then he sent me the video of it and I went, that's really good. And I guess it, it would warrant coming out again. I mean, does Ryland even know what it is? No, exactly. You know Everyone what? under 25 would probably go, what is this? Anybody who's come into magic in the last 10 years will not have a clue what we're talking about. No. And because it was around before the internet really took off, you can't even YouTube it. Like, uh, you, and you, there's a guy wrote to me, now I know they don't always get through, who's done it on America's Got Talent this time. He's just, just done it on America's Got Talent. Oh, and, wow. um, did you see the guy on Britain's Got Talent with the photograph? And he changed it in his top, that was switcheroo. So you should bring that back. I mean, what, one thing I know about you, and I don't know how you do it, but you have a mind for knowing if something's going to go well or not. Yeah, right. I, I, I think that's my best thing. People ask yeah. me often, what, what do you think your best asset is? And I see something and go, boy, that's a winner. Even other people's stuff. The first time I saw NFW, the first time I saw Mystery Box, Pen Through Anything. I saw Pen Through Anything at a bar with John before anybody knew what it was. Yeah. And I went, you are going to sell a gazillion. Everyone's going to do that trick. And he went, do you think so? And I went, Everyone is going to do that trick. Twisted Sisters. Remember Twisted Sisters? John Bannon, yeah. The first time I saw it, I said to Trish, this is massive. This, everyone will buy this trick. They're not always tricks I've done. And occasionally I get them wrong. And Notaire newspaper was one. I, I didn't really get it. I thought I was helping Tony Stevens out a little bit. of a. He needed a kid's show and he swapped it for some stuff. And I went, but you didn't tear anything. It's not magic, is it? And then all of a sudden, I went, actually, this is pretty good. So usually I've got a good eye, usually. My worst one is delight. Really? I thought it was, I thought it was rubbish. I didn't get it. <laughs> I, I didn't get it, Craig, at all. I, I went, I don't get it. It's stupid. 30 quid. Because I don't know if you remember the originals. 30 quid for two oh and a half. Who's going to buy this? Oh boy, oh boy, Craig. Somebody once told me, and it's a long time ago, he was on six million red sold. Wow. I don't know if that's true, but a very well-known guy, and I won't say who, said he sold six million red ones. Have you ever, but you, but you know, there's plots that people consider like uh, groundbreaking these days that you did years ago. And I'll give you an example. A trick that me and Ryan reviewed on the review show recently uh, is this trick that's just come out called Mini Me. And it's basically just on the back of a card, there's a drawing of a little magician with a top hat and you shake it and he pulls the card out. I'm like, Mark Mason did this years ago. He did a cardiographic on the back of a card. Yeah, drawn out. 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah, and it was amazing. Yeah, and, and you do see a lot of that, don't you? You do see a lot of people, yeah. you know, I don't want to get into it, but they, they change one little... Now, I haven't seen this trick. It could be a totally different method. 
And and it no, and it does I know happen. Joe and I, I know done it, so. I'm a little bit lucky. I mean, Pat Page is gone now, but I used to always ask Pat, have you seen this before? Do you know about this? And the other guy I have in my corner is Bob Swadling. You know, I work a lot with Bob. And yes. he's been around the block. It's not just coins, he's seen everything. So I'll say, Have you seen this, Bob? Because I thought if you did this and this and this, and he'd go, oh, that's great. Or that big argument about the magnetic pens that do the electronic vibrating. And Bob got lecture notes out from the 50s and showed me it. The 50s. And everybody's going, you can't put that out. That's got a, a magnet and it vibrates. And Bob went, I can remember. The, and he drew out lecture notes and showed me it. And I went, that's crazy. So it can happen, right, Craig? I mean, it does happen, doesn't it? You know, yeah. it happens. But yeah, that was called drawn out and the little card rose out of the, the picture, didn't it? What was your, out of everything that you've ever created yourself, what's your favourite trick? My creation or just something okay. that I marketed? Both. Something that you've marketed for JB Magic and then also something you created yourself. I can only have one, really one, one. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes I think, do I love it because I sold so many? I'm trying to be honest. Or is it really, really good? I always thought solo was a great trick, where the card vanished. Because remember back then, not everybody knew about elastic. I started sewing things together in the early 90s. And that was a brilliant trick, you know. It demmed great. It worked great. The plot was good. The plot was... A br I love exact as well. I love exact. The plot was great. Did you see the one not very old of Alex Latore's Juxtapad? Yes, that was great. I, I liked the plot again. The plot's great. And I've got that deming for magicians where they go, well, it's going to be a book test. And then all of a sudden, it's something different. Yeah. I thought that was terrific. No, ten newspaper, ter terrific. Solo, really strong. Uh, they're good tricks, you know, they're... They're in a lot of people's real repertoire. I get emails from people saying, Mark, I make a living with no tear newspaper every single Saturday of my life. I'll tell you something. I, 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 when I go out and gig, you talked about me doing card under box, which I do an awful lot. I've never said this on the channel before. Whenever I go out and do a gig, yeah, I do a card under box. But what I have with me is I always have a ghost box. Always ghost have a ghost box. box. Great, right? It's the best way. To, to achieve that, that there is. It's amazing. Yeah. It's so good. And you remember when you just said a minute ago, you're ever going to bring anything back? I, I've got a new idea for Ghost Box. It's sim pretty much the similar thing, but a slightly different way of constructing it. As, as you get older and smarter and better tooling, um, I go back to Bob again. I showed Bob it and Bob went, that's fantastic. He went, well, what is it? He said, that is... So, I, do you remember members only where where yes. it disappeared and went in the ghost, in the box. I showed Bob Swadling and he went, you should be selling that. And I said, well, I've, j I've changed it a bit. How it is. So one day I might redo Ghost Box because I've got a really good idea for it, a really smart, logical. But that's one of the things that I've found with you. You market something and after a couple of years, because you're bringing new stuff out every year, it kind of, it disappears. And, if, and it's a lot of the stuff that you bought out, it's so old. It would be new if you bought it. I'm not a again. massive version two guy. I, I, I've got a no tear newspaper two because I thought having a hole in and restoring the hole gave it a proper ending. I liked that. But I've got, I could have version two of everything because you know the first time you did card under box, it's different now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's changed 50 times. I now have a tying system that no one's seen where you can put them down in the open position. I, I can throw something tied offset and throw it down and they stay they stay offset. When I snap, they, they close. So you could do all that tying stuff again if you wanted to. Um, uh, I, I've, I've literally built a braking system into how it's tied so it stays open or, or closes. So you could have everything again if you wanted. I just, I, I'm not massive on... I hate saying this because I don't beat anyone up, but sometimes version nine, you know it's just for money, right? Yeah. yeah you, you know, do. let's not lie. Rocky seven's not as good as Rocky, is it? It's just not, is it? it no. 
and and Sylvester's made a, a billion dollars out of them movies and fair dues to the guy. I'm no Rocky St Sylvester Stallone, but version nine is not a, you can't have a better version nine. It's ridiculous. So I tend not to do a lot of them. So them tricks do disappear, some of them. Members only, ghost box, that's a good one, yeah. Um, Future Zone, Tempest Fugit, there's loads of them. The little angel that moved, disappeared yep. off the back, yep. and Twilight Angel, or whatever it was called, or Twilight Cards, or it was a version of the Paul Harris thing. Uh, they're all gone now. I tend to move on, you know. Well, before, before I ask you the next question, let me, let me ask you this. On the subject of creativity, it's the holy grail for a lot of magicians to be able to create their own magic trick that they want to market. As somebody who's a dealer who also takes ideas from people and produces them and markets them, what advice would you give somebody who's wanting to create their own trick, both in terms of approaching somebody like you, a dealer, and in terms of making sure that the trick is right before they even get to you? Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a tightrope because some guy, young or old, sat in his house, can't always have performed it a thousand times, so he hasn't got all the, the crinkles out of it. When he approaches someone like me or, or Alakazam, I, I have nothing to hide. Alakazam are a fantastic producer. They're great guys. Peter or Roy. they come to Vanishing Inc. or whoever. Yeah. They've got to be prepared to take on some advice, haven't they? They have to, really, because... If you saw a lot of my, I just mentioned Juxtapad, it's not even like what I bought. It's not even like it. It's, a, it's like a different product, the way it works, how it's manufactured. So approach someone, but be open and be prepared to listen a little bit. And Because you don't have to go with them. You can say, well, no, I don't want you to market my trick. Me personally, I like methods, don't I? I like, I like methods and gimmicks. They're my thing, really. If it's got a creative, clever gimmick, then I, I, I like that. I like it to be, don't have to instant reset in five seconds or anything. I don't care it didn't reset in five seconds, but I do want it to be something that you can do again, you know, over and over, which is, which is always nice. Um, it's hard to, you've got to have what you want it to do, I think, the, the effect. What do you want it to do, Craig? What do you want this flipper trick to do? And I think you've got to kind of strive from there. But honestly, you've got to have some background history as well. You can't spend a year making uh, a rough and smooth deck, can you? Because it's been done in a million times. So you have to have some, some knowledge. So read a bit, get advice, ask people, ask, go to the club and say, has anybody seen anything like, because most clubs have had a thousand performers, right? They've had a thousand yeah. lecturers. Ask the old boy at the club and say, did anybody ever do this vanishing pen trick, you know? And, and if they did, then they, they did. But I love it when I see a new method. When I see something, um, I don't know if we're, we're going to release a trick in um, the 18th. It's pre-release is the 11th. And it's a card to box of envelopes. All right, it's a card to envelopes. And... The reason I'm bringing it up is it's a card to envelope. You've seen a card to envelope before, right? Of course yeah. you have. I, I can show you 10 now. But when I see this method, I go, oh, gee, look at this. It's really inside. It's inside the envelope. And that's what I like, that buzz, that where I go, it's inside. It's not half a card. It's not a switch. It's not palming one. It's bloody inside the envelope and that's my that's my buzz really Craig that's what if you can achieve that little moment and I'm on about creating now that look at this that pen through anything moment that mystery box moment that that moment you've got a winner then and then you have to decide if you want someone to make it for you or if you're going to have a bash yourself not not easy making tricks you know Craig when you asked me to do this interview and I put you off, I was 1,200 tricks behind. That's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to decide if you're a lawyer or a doctor or a dentist or a school teacher, making tricks is never going to be for you. Never. Never. You're never going to get to the number you need to get to. But if, if you don't mind working with someone, then by sure, approach someone. You should. 
But that trick, oh, and by the name, by the way, the name, Killer in Manila. Come on. I should get a badge for that name, right? Absolutely. Now, I am glad you brought this up because, you know, I know that it's being released. This, this interview, I believe, is going out on the uh, Tuesday, which is the 15th, I think. And the official release date is three days' time on the, on the 18th, right? Yeah. But I saw it at Blackpool. And I think I was your first customer at Blackpool because I, I went in before the place opened and you were setting up. We weren't open. No, I was exactly. setting up and you went, what's new? And you, you showed me this. You were like, oh, let me show you. You showed me the No Choice Wallet, which I reviewed on the show. Yeah. I do it in every gig. Yeah. Uh, you also showed me... Um, Might have been initial the, shock where the initials moved. Which I performed on the show. Ryland's performed it, and it's an amazing trick, and I absolutely love yeah. it. It's, it's, an in, it's like a, an online trick. Now. It's that, got that little second of magic, hasn't it? That little... It's great for virtual shows. It's great for social media. Ryland's done it on his channel. And then you showed me this. And as good as the other two were, this is the one that, for me, was the hit. I was telling everyone at Blackpool, go see Mark Mason, go see you, Killer and Vanilla. Uh, you know when you know, Craig, I'll give you a great thing when I know, Blackpool was perfect. I dem hard all day Friday. Of course, I'm deming, 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 deming. On Saturday, when you know, when people just walk up and say, can I see the envelope trick? No, nothing else. Can I see the envelope? Can I see? You know that people are in bars, in restaurants, in the hotel going, you should see this trick, right? I've got Michael Amar here. I've got Chad Long here. I've got him. Everyone going, have you seen this envelope trick? You know, and you know then you've got something. And I don't often get super carried away. It's really good. I'm going to put you on the spot right now, Mark. Would you mind performing it for people so that they can see it? Because a lot of, of people... not. I can I can do it for you. Now, bearing in mind, I'm, I'll do my best. I'm sitting down at a table. I don't do Zooms and stuff. Do I, do, what do I do? Do I have to move this now? And Yeah, just move the laptop down so we can see your mat, and I reckon we'll be All okay. Right. So this is Killer in Manila, Craig. Um, it uses an envelope that you can show. Now, when I perform, somebody's holding this. Of course, I've got no people here, so just bear with me, all right? Yep. Um, I'm going to put that just to one side for now, but remember, it, it would be in full view at all times, okay? But I yep. want to spread the deck, so I'm just going to move it a second. Is that okay? Yep, it's fine. Regular deck, and that's the best bit for me. It's a regular deck. You can use any deck you like. Now, I'm going to spread these and ask you to point me somewhere. Do you want a card from here or here? Yeah, or would yeah, you rather yeah. have one here section. near yeah. the top? What, what do you want? The middle, somewhere in the middle. Middle-ish? What about yep. these? Do you want one, two, or three? Number two. Oh, this one. So this will be your selection. I give you my word, it really is any. And you've got the, this one. Let me look. Oh. The seven of spades, is that all right? I'm happy with that. This card is signed. I know what we'll do. Let's put Ryland on there. Perfect. <laughs> I hope I you can that. see that. Yeah, that's cool. I see it. So basically, let me recap. Any card is signed and selected from any deck, and it goes in. Two cuts. Can you remember I mentioned an envelope before? Can you remember that? Yes. Inside the envelope's $20. And I'm going to give you a chance to win the 20. Now, let me just say it can be 20 euros, 10 pounds. The money's nothing to do with it. All right, Craig? Okay. Craig, if you can select your own card, you win the big money. Okay. I know it's not big money to you, but uh, to most people, a 20 is worth having. All right. <laughs> so with that in mind, let me explain. If you think this is your card, yes? Yeah. If you do, then you win the money. All right. Okay. Yeah. So where do you think you're, I tell you what. Let's deal them down. Where do you think your card could be? Oh, stop. This one? The one on the deck. Oh, how did you do? Terribly. <laughs> you didn't win the money. No. Most people don't even believe there is money. But I give you my word, inside this envelope, there really is. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. There's, a, there's a, another envelope here. Inside this envelope, I hope you can see, is the 20. Can you see that? I can see that, yes. But you didn't win it, so I get to keep it. Oh, hang on a minute. It couldn't be, could it? Could it be, Craig? 
inside the envelope that's inside another envelope that's underneath a $20 bill, there's a card. It's not half a card, it's not a piece of a card, it's not an elastic, it's not a switch of any kind. There's one card and one card only. If he said Ryland and had the seven of spades there, I think even you would have to agree that is a killer in Manila. That is amazing, Mark. That is brilliant. You know what I love about that trick? It's so incredible. When you see how it works, it's as impressive as the actual trick itself. And that's what I was saying before, that once I saw the method, Alex Latore sent me the design for the envelope. I, I went, oh my God, that is so smart. Half the dem at Blackpool were showing the method. Half yeah. the dem. I was going, look at this. And they were going, I'll, I'll take one. Well, the nice thing is, from a worker's point of view, you hand the envelope out at the very, very beginning. Yes. You can, you can hand it out at the beginning of your set and you can close with this. They can hold on to it the entire time. It's a genuinely signed card. It's very easy to do. Um, th there's no palming. You, 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 you get the card at just the right moment. And when you open the uh, envelope, take out the second envelope, they can examine that first envelope. You can give it back to Correct. them. Then they open, um, then you open up the second envelope. You can see that it's a normal envelope. And then you take the, it's just genius. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's genius. And excuse, I'm sitting down and I couldn't quite see. I, I, if you could see the envelope coming, I was struggling a bit for you to, and that's why, but it really is that clean. It's an envelope. It can start in your inside. I like to give it to someone. So you hold on to that. You got a chance of winning a 20 or a 10. Or if you like you, it'll be a 50, Craig. But I ain't got that sort of money. You know, I'm a regular guy here. I'm not living that dream you're living. Um, I hope that looked kind of okay because I know in real life it kills. It, it, it's fantastic. Well, I'll tell you, I actually do that on a Zoom show. Um, cause as you know, I do a lot of virtual shows and I have yeah. a set up and I have the envelope on there set up right there. And then what I do, and it's on screen the entire time. And I say, I kind of do it as a challenge thing. I say, I want you guys to watch that envelope. I'm not going to go anywhere near it. At the end of this whole thing, something amazing is going to happen. And then I have them pick the card. What I do is I, I spread, I get them to name a card because it doesn't matter whether I see it or not. So I tell them to name a card. I take right. the card. And I ask them to give me their name. I write their name on, and then when I when I do the uh, when I when I do the reveal, I take it off the stand. And as I do, that's when I do the move. And they it's yeah. been play the yeah. whole game, and it's so and good. I didn't for you, but at Blackpool, I've got a crowd. But you came in at eight a.m. or something. So the guy holding the envelope at this end, when I go to collect that to take it back to him at the other end, the guy who's going to win the twenty. It's all over, right? It's yeah. it's done. And I literally do it while I walk from one side to the other. Now here I had to kind of just make something up because we're on Zoom and I'm on this tiny little mat. But yeah. um, it, it's a great method, isn't it? Brilliant. It's absolutely, yeah. I would say, and I'm not just, you know that I've made a reputation for myself in magic that I tell the truth. And it's got me into trouble in the past a lot of yeah. the time. You know and it me. will. And it will, and it always does, and it continues to do so. And I'm going to go on the record right now and tell everybody, and I was saying it at Blackpool, and I'll repeat it right now. This, I asked you the question, what's the best thing you've ever bought out? I'm telling you right now, it's this. Well, and the you know reason I didn't say it when you asked me is it always sounds a bit fake, doesn't it? The next thing, you know, it just so happens that it is the next thing that's coming out. Um, i got a surprise next year. I've got something good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got something really good, and that's all I'm saying. But I've got something everyone's going to do. I'm telling you, it's going to be difficult to beat Initial Shock, Killer in Manila, and the No Choice Wallet. I that thought the No Choice was great. Yeah, what a, lot. a lot of people don't know. That was meant to be last year's Blackpool, another year. And what Tony sent me, I just, I didn't love, to be honest. And I have to stand there and dem it and say, this is great. I didn't like how it nested and fit and... And, and it took almost another year before it was ready to... Uh, it's good, that, isn't it? Really no good. choice. I do it with a blank deck, and it just absolutely... Yeah, fits. can't be with a blank deck. I don't know if you realise, but this doesn't have to be um, a card inside. Um, it can be a prediction. It doesn't have to be money, I mean. 
Oh, yeah. It can be writing. It can be something folded. People are already saying, I know it's going to be good because they're saying, when does Killer in Manila come out? I just had an email yesterday going, when does Killer in Manila come out? So, yeah. uh, really yeah, good. I've been wanting to put it on the review show for a while, but I wanted to hold off until everybody could get it. It wouldn't be fair. Well, I'd love you to review it. I know, I know you like the trick, so I'd love you to review it. And yeah. if you don't like it, review something of someone else's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pick on that's... Penguin or something. Don't pick on me. It's uh, not fair. Very easy to pick up. Pick on Nardi. I'll pick on Nardi. Yeah, pick on him. Pick on that Nardi guy and that, that team. <laughs> now, before we wrap this whole thing up, yeah, can we talk a little bit about... Because um, you talked about going to America. That Was that a big... Like, that's, a, that's a kind of a big life choice. Like Massive. You've got, you've got this successful business that is super successful, everyone knows you in, in Blackpool, and you decide to take everything online, and you've said yourself you haven't got the biggest online presence. I you haven't. decided to take everything online, move to a different country. I mean, talk about taking a risk, Mark. Yeah, yeah. We, we call, me and Tricia call it the, the all-in moment. So I've been all-in about four times in, in 30 years when you really can do with it not going wrong, right? You mean... It's all in and all in, right? And I got an 01 visa in 07, and an 01 is outstanding in your field visa. They let you go to America. And we bought a little house. Believe it or not, I bought a house out of the switcheroo money. <laughs> so we'd, we'd, we'd bought a little house, and we kept going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. The biggest, you know, the biggest bit for me isn't what you all think. It was closing the shop down and... Uh, not sad that I didn't have a magic shop, but like, you know, Darren who worked for me, Darren Robinson, Darren and Mark James and Paul Roberts. And it was closing down really because they all work there. Now, don't get me wrong. They were all performing as well. And I knew they'd be okay, but I, I was more upset really closing it down and saying, that's the end of it, guys. It was time for a, a, a change. I, I, Every American convention I did, I did great. It was like being new again. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'd, I'd stroll into Magic Live, and you can't imagine what my first Magic Live was like. There was just 50 people all day going, I'll take one, I'll take one, I'll take one. And Tricia said she, you know, okay, let's do it, you know, because she's half this team. She hasn't had much of a mention in this interview, but behind the booth, she's always there. She knows what to do, when to say, how to. So she, she said, yeah, we'll, we'll go and let's take a chance. And do you know what I said? We can come back. The big gamble was I haven't got a massive online. I, I, I do okay online. I, when I release something new, it's brilliant for a, a few weeks. And, but overall, my online presence is just okay. But I knew there was 20 conventions, and that's where I excel really, right, Craig? I think that's what I do best. And yeah. I said, that's what we should try and do. So it was massive, really. And um, right now, I don't know if you realise, I'm speaking to you from Spain. Do you know I'm in Spain? Yeah, you mentioned to me. Uh... We have a house in Spain. I, I bought a villa in Spain because I always wanted to live looking over the ocean and stuff. It was like a, a goal. And I'm going to spend quite a lot of time here now. Now, I'm not packing up in America. This would be a good platform because people are going, are you leaving? The business is still in Florida. My shipping's still from Florida. I also ship from England. I have a guy in England who ships. And I'm going to spend a bit of time here and, and, and develop some material and maybe finish that book I have started once. And, and, uh, and I'll go backwards and forwards for a while. But yeah, it was massive and it had to work really. But I already had a house. I was already in the convention circuit. I was doing some magic shows. I had some good clients and I thought, you know, this could really work. But so in 2010, so already 10 years, we turned that key on JB Magic for the last time. I owned the shop and the apartment above. We owned the, and we sold it and, and, we, and we moved on. I'm really glad though, can I just say to see how much Darren Robinson's flourished um, and, and Mark James, and, and, and the guys from the shop, they, they're, they're all full-time performers, aren't they? You know, I know COVID's changed everything. I think Paul Roberts is a brilliant performer. I was, 
working with Paul Roberts at a gig in London just before the pandemic hit. And I'd never gigged with him before. And I was watching him. Uh, and he was he was exceptional. He's solid, right? He's a oh. solid performer. So is Darren. Darren's a... So is Mark... Do you know Mark James? Mark James has... Blo- I mean, he's the man now, isn't he? I mean, he's done Penguin Lives and Alakazam Academies. And- he walked into my shop and said, ask him, I want to do some magic tricks. He'd never seen a magic trick. He was singing at Butlings or... And, and I sold him some magic tricks. And I swear this is true. You can ask Darren. He'd been in once. Once. And I said to Darren Robinson, he could be really good. Really good. And they went, why? And I went, he could, trust me, he's, he's, he's got it. He's got that twinkle in his eye and the right look. And he was a big lad then. He's lost a lot of weight, hasn't he? It's nothing to do with weight. or The weight doesn't make Mark a good or bad performer. It's got nothing to do with that he's lost eight stone or something. He's just a good performer. Yeah. And I'm really glad they all have, have gone on and flourished and done really well. We had a young kid called Matt Hickson who never really wanted to do do magic, but he's gone off and done his thing. And so that worked out really well, really, that they, you know, they didn't end up in the Dole office and, and, and signing on and going, what, what, what am I going to do now sort of thing. So, so mm. that's, they're, they're a good bunch of kids. Matt, Matt James, I spoke to just a few weeks ago. We dropped a message on Facebook. Darren or Jin, as I still call him, because he's got red hair. Jin will always talk, you know, we, we've been friends. Uh, Darren worked for me since he was 16 years old. 16. Wow. He was a kid. That's incredible. So it, it, it was kind of cool that it worked out, really, but it was a big move, but we, we did the right thing, I think. But I'm definitely going to spend quite a bit of time in Spain now, and, and um, my Spanish is... Yo um, solo hablo un poco de español. I only speak a little Spanish. Um, Spanish from Yorkshire, right? My lead Spanish. It's perfect. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Two questions, then we're going to wrap it all up. Question number one. Obviously, you work really closely with uh, uh, Bob Swaddling now, which is amazing. Yeah. I remember um, one of the highlights of my Blackpool experience when I was younger and I was first going was going over and watching Bob Swaddling and just seeing the stuff that he did on his booth. I always remember it. It was on the right-hand side as you go up towards the arc. Yeah. He, he does so much great stuff. Um, like, is other stuff coming from Bob Swaddling? Because I was looking on your site, because you know I've just put an order in, and I was looking at Double Deception, which you know I love, and it actually says on there, Mark's favourite trick on, on your site. It says Mark's favourite trick. It's such an amazing It's, it's my favourite coin trick. It's an amazing coin trick. It's so good. It's so good. I don't know if there will be what you're calling brand new Bob swaddling items, but me and Bob work together on lots of items. He, he's pretty much a, a development consultant for me. He really is. It's that important. I go, I see him almost every week. Um, he helps me in design and development. Um, he's smart, right? I mean, he, there's no point in saying he isn't. He, he's smart and, he, and he's a 67, 65 year engineer he's been an engineer since he was a kid so he helps me with jigs and setting things up and making things can you remember the iphone we did a few years ago yes the design what i had and how it ended up and bob said you could do this and this could be cut out of one piece and the gimmick could slide in like this it's really different really so whether there'll be don't forget he's 81 i don't know if there'll be a new range of bob swaddling gimmicks i really don't Coming out. I went to Bob's house two weeks ago. He showed me a fantastic three-card Monty with a gimmick no one's ever seen. No oh. one's ever seen. Guy just doesn't. I've never stop. seen anything like it. I said, I said, what is that? It's not Pat Page's thing. It's not that. I said, why? And then I went, that's a great idea. So he's still there and developing. He can't help it. He's just that's who he is, right? Did you ever bring out the power pack? I did the power pack with Bob. Did you know that? Yeah, no, I didn't. I, I just know I had one and I lost it and I desperately want another one and you can't get it for love nor money anymore. Bob, Bob had a guy in England. That power pack's a bit more involved than you think inside. It gets hot and it moves the coil and it fires. And he had a special guy design it all and that guy is, is not available anymore. And um, me and Bob put out a limited amount. I can't remember the number. Let's just say 300 or something. And they all sold... And uh, I took it to Magic Live and no one had seen it before. 
How do you think that went, Craig? <laughs> um, so uh, I don't know if it'll happen again, um, but Bobby's super smart. He, he's he, he makes me laugh sometimes because he, he can't remember a guy's name from two days ago, but goes on the lathe and can make anything to any number, any tolerance. It makes me smile. But Bob and Val are my, you know, my really good friends of mine and Trisha's, and we have a close relationship. And and he, he's he's a really smart and clever man, and he's been brilliant for me. He's he, he's helped me with a lot of ideas and techniques, and I've learned a lot. I always tell him that I learned a lot because you know I do all the expansions, I make all the expanded coins, I I do all that. Bob, I've made Bob, I've made an expanded coin in I don't know how long, years and years and years. I make every one. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Bob taught me, Bob taught me, and um, I stand next to him, and, and, I, and I make, I bring them all to a number, and, and I was going to be the machinist as well at one time, but it's hard to do everything. I don't mean, can't, I can't do it, I mean, it's hard to do everything, right, so, yeah. but yeah, it, it's been really good, and I don't know if there'll be, to answer your question, another range of Bob Swadling stuff, but he will be involved in some more ideas, that right now he's involved in something. I, I want you won't remember because I can't. He had a trick called the swaddling swindle. You can't remember. There's no way. He, he, I think he said it was sixty something, nineteen sixty something. And what it really is is a split coin. Wow! It's two halves of a coin that magnetically go together. And I've still got this idea for a split coin that's different to all the others. And I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to. We just talked about it last week. I think it will happen next year. I've got an absolute brilliant idea for what you would kind of call a split coin. Kind of. It's not quite, but it's like that. But it's the swaddling swindle, really. And it was in the 60s. That's crazy. What, what's your other question? One last question. And this is the question I always ask everybody. And you kind of answered it, but um, what's next? And what I mean by that is you have you know if you never if you shut down jb magic tomorrow and never appeared in a magic convention ever again your legacy is set people will be talking about you for a very 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 long time to come that's because nice of you to say you know, you, you 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 know set you are the quintessential dealer you're the dealer everyone goes to when they first go to a convention oh, that's nice so, thank you you've had so much success both as a performer and as a creator and as a as a dealer and what's next i mean you've mentioned stuff coming out next year uh, you've mentioned uh, uh, we 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 four tricks in development two are two are now approved prototypes they're approved they're done uh, if if it was blackpool next month sorry two months Two would definitely be there, probably three. I've only slackened off a bit because there isn't a Blackpool, there isn't a Magi Fest, there isn't a... Um, so, yeah, there's going to be more tricks. I'm 55 now, I'm getting old, Craig. How old are you now? Uh, I'm 44. So, uh, will I call it... I don't want to call it a day. I don't want to do nothing. I'd like to think I'd always be in development and, and maybe develop some stuff and... And, and create some ideas, but not be the guy sitting and making them all. That will go away one day. Everyone laughs, but I won't do it forever. I won't always be, because conventions are hard work. It's not about being top dog or second dog, or it's just hard graft. Knowing you, if you can't put 100% into it, that's the day that you'll stop. If That'll you probably be it. Physically yeah. Yeah. If you and your back hurts a bit more and your feet hurt a bit more. And and so I'll, I'll always develop stuff. Um, I think that'll always happen. And, and probably work with some company somewhere and give them some ideas. I've, I've got a ton of stuff. I mean, I know everyone says that, but a ton of stuff, a ton of stuff that, that really should be published or in a, a book or in an article or or perfect example i do card under box you do card under box right yeah so my top card of my deck my top card of my deck is roughed okay right my box cellophane no one does this it belongs to me is roughed the cellophane right i put down a double 
this card's roughed. I put down a double, this card is roughed, yeah? yeah? And I cover it with the box as I teach them how to do it. I say, and I sneak it under there. Now I move this and this card goes with it with the roughing. That is genius. Yeah? This is really their card. Because yeah. it's second down, it goes into tilt, I snap, and now I lift it, and it's back here. It's not, I've got to do a double, but now their card's back here, right? <laughs> so I've a, a ton of material that I've never published, never shown anyone. No one roughs the box. You nope. rough the cellophane, and it stays on for a month. And it'll act, and you can do it this rough. And it just stays there until you lift it and then it drops. Wow, that is great. So I say, but don't tell everybody and I move the box and then boom, it's it's under there. So I like I like developing stuff still, is what I'm trying to say. I love the development of stuff and I've got some other ideas that I'll end up doing. I enjoy doing the road shows with Paul Richards and the gang. I hope they continue. It's only COVID that stopped it. And um that's kind of what's next, I guess. We keep developing and we keep coming up with ideas. And, hey, I have to fool Craig Petty every year at Blackpool. Do you know how hard that is? Well, you manage it every year. <laughs> you know how tough that is? I have to do that every year. Your, your Ian Baradells and all the guys, I have to fool them every year. That's tough. So that, that's what I hope. Um, I'm really glad that you invited me on and I got a chance to spend an hour with you and have a chit-chat and... And uh, and I hope somebody watches it. I don't know if they will or not, but what did we lose, right? We get a lot of people watching these interviews. Yeah, you'll, yeah, definitely a lot of people are going to watch it. Yeah, and if there's anything I can ever help you with or you've got questions or ideas or, uh, you know, drop me a thing and if someone asks you something and I can help, then then, then shoot. You know what? I had, a, I had a great run the last three weeks. The week before you, I had D. Christopher. You know D. Christopher, obviously. Yeah. Uh, the week before, I had Sean Farquhar. And the week before that, I had Nate Cranzo. I'm like, how am I going to top Nate Cranzo, D. Christopher, and Sean Farquhar? How do you top those three guys? You get an interview with Mark Mason. That's what you do. I don't know, I don't know if it tops it, and I don't know how long Sean did, but it was probably 11 hours of Sean, right? Because he, he, he's, the, I call him the Ken Dodd. He's like, wind me up and away I go. I know Sean really well. A great guy. Great magician, by the way. Great. Cool. Sean, very strong. Very strong. You know what a lot of people don't know about Sean? I didn't see the interview. It's very good behind the scenes. Did anything to do with lighting, sound, yeah, technology? Oh, did you? I didn't know that. He's really strong. Really strong. He's, uh, he's well, very good at that stuff. He's opened his own theatre now. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's taking a step back from the cruises and he's doing yeah. a theatre every night and he's in charge of everything and he's you know, like, I'll, I'll be at some show somewhere and something doesn't work or and and the last shot and sean normally can fix it you know four f's or wherever he he, he can the four f's or what he can he can just fix stuff because it's experience again that's what he does right and yeah. i mean that that would be weak for me my i i would go if he doesn't plug in i'm not going to be great but he's brilliant at that stuff and they're strong interviews, by the way. All joking aside, they're very strong interviews. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to keep the, uh, the, 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 the quality of the interview is really high on this, which is why I wanted to invite you. And seriously, thank you so much for coming on the chat. I know you're really busy. Like you said, I've been trying to organise this interview for weeks and you're like, I can't, I'm making tricks. I'm like... Please, yeah. just a lot of people don't realize I make the tricks. I still sit and put the magnets in and make sure they line up and make sure it works. And every killer in Manila, I think I made them all. Every well, single one. You know, I know quality control and, and, and it, customer service and the quality of the product is something that's very important to you. Yeah. Because, you know, you know that people it's are too small of a market, Craig. It's, we're, not, we're not selling jeans and t shirts here. This is, you know, we're not. We're selling magic tricks nearly always to the same people over and over and over and over again, right? Yeah. So exactly. as soon as you go, I don't really care. It didn't work. I don't care. You know, you've got a massive problem coming your way. I agree. I agree. I totally agree. And there's lots of companies that do go down that route and you don't. So there you go. I'm going to put your website down below. If you want to check any of Mark's stuff out, uh, you go to in the UK or Europe, you go to JBTV, 
England.co.uk. Is that right? England, yeah, Europe. Yeah. And then USA. Is jbtvusa.com. Correcto. It's not live at the moment, but on the 18th, Killer in Manila will be live on both sites. Is that right? 11th, it'll be live, but it'll be pre-order. You'll be able to put one in your basket on the 11th, but on the 18th worldwide, it will go then. Very quickly before you go as well, because I've just put an order on the site. Can you just give people the rundown of the $100 deal? Because you bought this Christmas. You never oh, the Christmas pack. So you never did I know you don't believe in discounting. Yeah, but you've got I, I don't want to get into knocking anyone. I just don't do discounting because I sit and make all this stuff. And I tell everybody, they think I'm making it up. I don't do Black Friday and I don't do Cyber Monday. And it was cold in March, so I have 50% off. And But every Christmas, I try and do a little deal, a little... It's really, I know it sounds corny, but it's just saying thanks. And this year was a, an odd year for us all. But the guys who buy from me all the time. So this year, I've done a little Christmas pack for England. There's five tricks for 70, I think. And in America, yeah. there's five tricks for 100. So they're fifteen pound a trick, or, or I mean, I think it's the best deal that you've done. I mean, the tricks in that pack. You're putting initial shock in. Initial shocks in there, because I. Do you know why it's in there? I didn't get a chance to show anyone it this year. No one's seen the trick. It's crazy. It's a great trick. Initial Amazing. shocks in there. Solos in there. Uh, tags a winner. So the English one has those. Uh, the American one's got five slightly different tricks. I do it on how thin they are and what they weigh because I have to ship them. That's yeah. They're not adjusted because of how many I've got in stock. It really is not great to have certain tricks in certain shipping packages. Because, um, yeah, they're called, it's called the Christmas pack. It's the first thing you'll see on both websites at the moment. Perfect. And that's only well stocks last, so it's going to be limited. So get it before. I do it till Christmas normally, or if the okay. stocks have gone. If the stocks have gone, they've gone or till Christmas, and then I kind of take it off and just send everyone a quick thank you. Awesome. So check that out as well. That's on the site right now. The links are down below. Mark, you are amazing. I'm sure I'll see you at a convention again soon. Um, please don't please don't stop doing what you're doing because- and Not for a magic. while. All the best, Craig. Great to speak to you, my friend. Um, I'll bump into you next year. I'll let you buy me that beer you've been promising me for 19 years. Yeah, Jesus, man, just buy me the beer. All the best, Craig. Bye for now, buddy. Bye. Bye.